Hello everybody, welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. Tonight's video is going to be on soil structure and soil density. And we're gonna talk about why you should no-till your garden. Now I know that's a hard concept for a lot of people to accept. I'm in a class right now and we have a representative from the USDA NRCS soil specialty group discussing this with us. And I'm gonna show you a couple clips so that I'm gonna share it with you. But let's talk about that. So if you go back and look, Stephen and I did a video and it's basically titled The Argument for No-Till. And in it, we do a couple of different demonstrations and experiments for you discussing and visibly showing you why you should not till your soil to farm it. So we have a no-till garden here. I hope that you find the information I'm gonna put in this video useful. This is an expert talking and she's just gonna to explain to you the differences of why you don't want to till the soil. And the biggest one is water runoff, okay? So if you're tilling your soil, you're killing and destroying the soil aggregates and the roots from last year, the root channels. So what you're basically doing is making it impossible for water to soak up into the soil. And when that happens, we have a lot of water runoff into our ditches, into our canals, into our streams, and into our rivers, carrying a lot of toxic chemicals because people are still real big on those chemicals. And then what we're finding is that our underground water aquifers are not refilling at the rate that they should be. And it's because we are no longer stewarding our soil correctly. So I hope you find this interesting. Hope you watch the rest of the video. Hopefully this will help you make the decision to no-till. You can go look at our no-till playlist and you can see exactly how to start a no-till garden with little expense and almost no equipment. You can do this, guys. If we could do this, you can do this. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Welcome to Starkey Farmstead. Sorry about this. I got stung by a honeybee at my dad's house the other day. Right on the face. So you guys have a blessed night. Enjoy the information I'm going to share with you because this is grade A stuff, guys. And you're getting it for free. So which side is going to be more prone to flooding? The right side. Left side. Left side. Both sides. Both sides. All right, so let's think about this. Okay, so the the right side is is what I was looking for because if if we if we had a, a hill slope all the way across there, um, and when you start looking at uh, the raindrop impact hitting something, and then dislodging and moving soil. Uh, instead of going into the ground so the ground's not absorbing the rainfall so where's that water going it's it's going to go downhill quicker on that bare soil because it doesn't have the vegetation to impact intercept that raindrop impact and then start slowing that water down does that make sense your own plots that you're that you're farming in uh, seeing some of these differences and what they mean and how it goes back to the soil structure and the pore space and, and your management practices. So that's that's why we're continually focusing on this one photo with, with different perspectives. And All right, so when we look at soil structure and density, which side do you think where the soil is more compacted, uh, where it has less pore space and higher density? Right. Right side. That right mm -hmm. side. Yes, that's that's what I would think too. Sheer amount of vegetation. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. All right. So which side do you think has more carbon in biomass above the ground? Right. No. Left. Left side. Left side. Yes, yes. All right. The above ground biomass is, is the above ground vegetation. Um, and what about below ground? What about under when, when we when we go under the surface? Um, how which which side would still have more biomass? Oh, yes, just think mm -hmm. about if if you've got if you've got vegetation above ground, you're going to have the same amount below ground in roots. Okay, so where's the carbon? In the picture, where is the carbon? 
it's in the plants and it's in their roots and it's stored uh, in the soil. Okay, so what they don't need is excreted through their roots. So what carbon, liquid carbon that they don't need is excreted in their roots and then that feeds some of the other soil critters. So it may be bound up in the plants, in their, their leaves, their roots, bound up um, in other soil critters, or it may be adhered onto the soil particles themselves. So over time, which side is accumulating more carbon in the soil? Left. Left side. Is that 